Hello and welcome to the 9 p.m. news on VOP TV. I am Kayla Abraham. And I am Choma Innocent. Here are the headlines. FCT Police Command for kidnapping plot raids bandits hideout in Abuja. Federal government sends Interpol after fleeing Binance director. Petrol price crashes as NNPC announces new price for marketers. Nigeria government invites Gumi for questioning over banditry. And in sports, world drumlist Nadozie Oshwala, 20 others for South Africa clash. Now the news in detail will begin with Nigerian government inviting controversial Islamic cleric Ahmad Gumi for questioning. Sheikh Gumi was invited for questioning over his comment on the activities of bandits in the country. The Minister of Information and Orientation, Mohamed Idris, disclosed this while addressing journalists at the State House Abuja today. The minister said the Islamic cleric was not above the law, adding that the government has deemed it necessary to invite him for questioning. He will recall that a few weeks ago, Gumi had urged the Tinubu led government to join him in negotiating with bandits. He urged the president not to repeat what he described as the mistake made by former President Muhammad Buhari, who he said refused to dialogue. With bandits. The operatives of the FCT Police Command on Saturday stormed a kidnapper's den in Jibi Forest, bordering Day Day Abuja at the early hours of the morning. On sighting police operatives, the bandits fled from their hideout to escape arrest. According to the police spokesperson in the Nigerian capital, SP Josephine Ade, the crime prevention operation was carried out on the heels of credible intelligence. According to the intelligence, one Malam Danai Boy and Ilu gang members and colleagues to one Nasiru Mohammed, also known as Danger, who was earlier arrested and paraded by the police command on March 11 in connection with a series of kidnappings in FCT had planned a represal kidnapping attack in Zuba and its environs for the arrest of their members. Exhibits such as firearms and cows were recovered from the camp. Kaduna State Governor Uba Sali has received the two ammo the personnel carriers and 200 highly trained members of the special squad of the Nigerian police force. Now this followed the recent cases of the incest and the bandit and the criminal attacks. You will recall that bandits attacked the Kuriga community and kidnapped 137 school children who were released last Saturday after 16 days in captivity. Governor Uba Sani, who announced the development on his verified Facebook wrote that the state received the two among the personnel carriers and 200 highly trained members of the special squad of the Nigerian police force deployed to Kaduna State by the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kaldi Egbetokun, to strengthen the fight against terrorism, banditry, kidnapping and other forms of criminality. He therefore thanked the IGP for his outstanding service and support to the state. He also appreciated the president for providing focused leadership at this trying time in Nigeria's history and ensuring the safe return of the Kuriga school children. Meanwhile, the governor of Kaduna State Day said he could not sleep for 16 days over the abduction of 137 school children from the Kuriga area of the state. Ubasani disclosed this after the military handed over the pupils to the state government at the Kaduna State Government House. The governor promised to ensure the protection of lives across the state. The governor also commended President Bola Tunumbu, National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu, and the security agencies in the state. Sani also cautioned the media against trying to unravel the story behind how the students were rescued from captivity. On March 7, bandits had abducted 137 school children from the Chinko local government area of the state. In the wee hours of Sunday, the governor had announced the release of the abducted pupils. In the meantime, the federal government has distanced itself are making the rounds that the ransom was paid to secure the release of the 137 school children abducted from the Kuriga community in Chukun local government area of Kaduna State. Minister of uh, Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, told State House correspondent in Abuja today. According to Idris, the federal government had vowed not to pay ransom to secure the release of abducted victims. The minister commended the National Security Advisor and Service Chiefs for the role they played in securing the release of the school children. He said the president had asked security agencies to intensify efforts to stop the menace of kidnapping across the country. 
In another development, a former aide to the 2023 People's Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate Atuku Abubakar Frank Shaibo has mocked President Bola Tinubu over the escape of one of the detained Binance executives. Shaibu said Tinubu has ridiculed Nigeria by transforming the country's detention centers into amateur magician training grounds. Recall that Nadim and Jawala Binance's Far Africa regional manager and Tingran Gambarian were initially detained upon their arrival in Nigeria in February 26, 2024, on allegations of tax evasion and other charges. Following Binance's non compliance with a court order demanding data on Nigerian traders, the duo's detention was extended to prevent evidence tampering, but Anjawala may managed to flee on Friday from a guest house in Abuja where he and his colleagues were being held. It was learned that the escape occurred when guards allowed him to visit a nearby mosque for Ramadan prayers. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, Today said there is no hiding place for Nadim Anjawala, a director of violence who escaped from custody and fled the country after he was detained by the Nigerian government. The minister said the international police Interpol are currently on Anjawala's trail. Idris was reacting to the Binance executive escape from Nigeria. According to him, since Binance is an international firm, there is no way the culprit will evade arrest. His explanation came barely a few hours after the Office of the National Security Advisor confirmed that Anjawala, a key suspect in the ongoing criminal investigation regarding Binance's activities in Nigeria, managed to escape lawful custody on Friday, March the 22nd. In an official statement released by the Head of Strategic Communication for the Office of the National Security Advisor, Zakari Mijinyawa, it was explained that collaborative efforts between the Office Relevant security agencies, various government bodies and the international community are already underway to swiftly locate and detain the fugitive. The statement stressed that security agencies are working with the Interpol for an international arrest warrant on the suspect as preliminary investigation shows that Anjawala fled Nigeria using a smuggled passport. The personnel responsible for the custody of the suspect have been arrested and a thorough investigation is ongoing to unravel the circumstances that led to his escape from lawful detention. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu today presided over the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting. VOP News reports that the meeting took place inside the council chambers of the presidential villa in Abuja. Present at the meeting included Vice President Kashim Shatima, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation SGF Senator George Akume, the Chief of Staff to the President Femi Baja Biamila, the Head of the Federal Civil Service Palasha De Yemiaso, Ministers and some heads of government agencies. The FEC is a constitutional institution where ministers discuss and endorse government policies with the president serving as the chairman and the vice president as the vice chairman. The FEC meeting comes hours after President Tinubu, who turns 22 on March 29, ordered that no celebration be put together for his birthday due to the mood in the country. Worried by infrastructural deficits in the country, President Bola Tinubu has approved the renewed Hope Infrastructure Development Fund. The fund, which is a replica of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, is meant to facilitate effective infrastructure development across the areas of agriculture, transportation, ports, aviation, energy, health care and education in Nigeria. According to the proponents, the fund will invest in critical national projects that will, amongst other things, promote growth, enhance local value addition, create employment opportunities, and stimulate technological innovation and exports. Briefing State House correspondent in Abuja today, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, Zaka Dedeji, and the Minister of Solid Mineral Development, Dele Alake, explained that the objectives of the fund are to establish an innovative infrastructure investment vehicle to attract and consolidate capital, serving as a dynamic driver for economic advancement. 
The ever busy, ever busy Ado Ekiti Federal Highway linking Ekiti State with Kogi, Ondo and Abuja, among other destinations, was today barricaded for several hours by angry students and some staff of the Federal Polytechnic Ado Ekiti over poor state at the road network. The protesters in their large numbers prevented commuters and motorists from passing the road, thereby causing heavy traffic congestion, which led to gridlock for the greater part of the day. That the road also links important institutions such as the Government College at Doekiti, the Federal Silos Center, the Cargo Airport under construction, and Afe Babalola University. Reports gathered that during the peaceful protest, which they said was aimed at calling the attention of federal government and other relevant authorities to the state of the road, the st student lamented that it is only road that leads to their campus. Two of them, Kola Ayodele and Fumilola Moses, disclosed that it is now an herculean task assessing the school from the city, thereby posing dangers to their lives. They allege that many students and commuters had died on the road due to its deplorable state. We'll go on a short break and return with more stories. Stay with us. Welcome back. A 20-year-old man identified as Ojo was today arraigned before an Adoikiti chief magistrate court in Ekiti State over alleged house breaking and the stealing. The suspect was alleged to have stolen some noodles, seasonings, salt, onions, fufu, and a pot of soup, all valued at about 300,000 naira belonging to the complainant. Now, VOP News gathered that the incident happened on Thursday, March 14, at about 12 noon at Falego in Lawe Road in Adoikiti. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwonlu last week unveiled food markets that will offer 25% discounts to residents to cushion the effect on economic hardship and rising inflation. The initiative titled Onje Eko Food Market commence operations on Sunday across 27 locations, including Ikeja. VOP TV Oin Damola Olukutan visited Ifakoi Jaya Food Market to see reactions from Lagosians and bring back some reports. We now move on to Ondo State, where the All Progressives Congress APC lawmakers have thrown their weight behind the Governor Loki Ayedatiwa as the favored candidate for the upcoming November 16 gubernatorial election. These endorsements come after a closed-door meeting between the lawmakers and the party's National Working Committee in Abuja. Speaker Olamide Oladiji commended the APC's national leadership, particularly Abdullahi Gamduje, for their role in restoring peace to the state following the passing of Governor Rotimi Akaradolu. Highlighting Ayedatiwa's accomplishment since taking office, Oladiji expressed the confidence in his ability to uphold Akaradolu's legacy and steer the state forward. The speaker emphasized the governor's achievement in fostering collaboration between the judiciary and the executive branches are certain that Ayeda Tiwa's leadership has brought stability to Ondo State. The lawmakers pledged their unwavering support for both the APC's leadership and the administration led by President Bola Tinubu, reaffirming their commitment to advancing the renewed hope agenda. In response, Abdullah Higan Duje expressed gratitude for the lawmakers' endorsement and stressed the importance of unity within the party to ensure a successful gubernatorial primary election scheduled for April. Now in Edo State, the Chief Judge of the State, Justice Daniel Ogunboa, has made changes to the seven-man panel set up to probe the alleged misconduct and perjury leveled against State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibo by the Edo State House of Assembly. Chief Registrar of the State High Court, Bini B.O. Osawaru, in a statement on Friday, had announced the constitution of the panel by the Chief Judge headed by retired Justice S.A. Omonoa. The alterations in the new list now have Professor Boniface Omomion and Professor Violet Agbekove list delisted from the membership while President uh, uh, This indicates that BDC's advice not to sell above 1,269 naira for each dollar. 
The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, has crashed the depot price of premium motor spirit PMS, popularly known as Petro, from 614 naira per litre to 630 naira per litre. The NNPCL has also disclosed plans to sell directly to independent marketers instead of first taking it to private depots so final consumers would also be able to buy at cheaper rates. The national president of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria Eat man Abu Bakara May Gandhi confirmed the new price, nothing that NNPC has also promised more supply. Meanwhile, independent marketers paid that the, for the product at the new petrol price last week. The Eat man president, however, said only 1% of the products were supplied to marketers instead of the 50% product allocation. Just by the small percentage, he disclosed that the market has already reacted and the price crash is expected soon, even with the NNPC already selling the product at 517 naira per litre. We will go on another short break and return with business, sports and entertainment news. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We now move on to business. Well, Nigeria Stock Exchange commenced the week on a negative trajectory with the Nigerian Exchange Limited NGX All Share Index and Equities Market Capitalization experiencing a decline of 0.49% or 289 billion naira. This downturn comes as investors await the outcome of the ongoing Monetary Policy Committee meeting, which holds significant implications for market sentiment and investment decisions. Analysts had anticipated the cautious market sentiment, citing potential profit-taking actions and subdued the trading activity amidst anticipation of the MPC's decision. Notable declines were observed in the shares of Dangote Sugar Refinery PLC, Ikata Hotel PLC and Jays Bank PLC, reflecting investor sentiment amid prevailing market uncertainties. Amidst the cautious market sentiment, investors are keenly awaiting the outcome of the MPC meeting, where key decisions regarding monetary policy directions will be made. The MPC's decisions are expected to influence investor sentiment, market liquidity and economic outlook, particularly in the context of inflationary pressures and the exchange rate dynamics. Investors are closely monitoring development in both domestic and global economic landscapes with a focus on policy responses and the market indicators. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has communicated its decision to sell $10,000 to each bureau de change at a rate of 1,251 naira per dollar. This move follows the Apex Bank's announcement of resuming dollar sales to BDC operators after a prolonged ban signaling effort to enhance liquidity in the foreign exchange market and stabilize exchange rate dynamics. Development populations and enhancing livelihoods by targeting the distribution of food items to areas most in need the program aims to provide relief to households facing food insecurity and the economic hardship the initiative also aligns with broader efforts to achieve the united nations sustainable development eradication British International Investment BII has pledged $65 million to support the expansion effort of Indorama LMA fertilizers and chemicals in Nigeria. This financing agreement forms part of a larger $1.25 billion financial package aimed at bolstering Indorama's production capabilities and establishment and establishing a new port terminal for exporting purposes. The investment is poised to contribute to global food production and ensure food security by augmenting fertilizer production capacity and enhancing export capability, capabilities. The commitment by British International Investment signifies confidence in Nigeria's fertilizer industry and underscores the country's potential as a key player in the global fertilizer market. The expansion project is expected to create significant employment opportunities and stimulate economic growth contributing to Nigeria's effort 
to diversify its economy and attract foreign investment. Indorama's expansion initiative aligned with broader development goals aimed at enhancing agricultural productivity, supporting rural livelihoods and promoting sustainable development in Nigeria and beyond. The exchange rate charged by the Nigerian Customs Service for cargo clearance and import duties collection has experienced a significant reduction from 1,572 naira per dollar to 1,448 naira per dollar. These downward trend reflects the prevailing exchange rate dynamics in the foreign exchange market, with the naira witnessing strengthening against the dollar in recent weeks. The decline in the customs exchange rate mirrors ongoing reforms in the forex market aimed at enhancing transparency, reducing arbitrage opportunities and promoting exchange rate stability. The reduction in the exchange signifies successful implementation of forex market reforms by the CBN to address distortions and ensure alignment with prevailing market conditions. The near parity between the official and parallel market exchange rate reflects the efficacy of the CBN's interventions in stabilizing the forex market and reducing speculative activities. Market participants are optimistic about the prospect of sustained exchange rate stability and improved market efficiency following the implementation of forex market reforms and enhanced regulatory oversight. And now to entertainment. Veteran Nollywood actor turned politician Anayo Modestus Onyekwere Probably known as Kanayo or Kanayo, has taken to social media to confirm and mourn the demise of his friend and colleague Amechi Monago. VOP News reports that Amechi Monago died over the weekend. Amid mixed reactions over the veteran actor's death, Kanayo took to his Instagram platform today to recall his moment with Monago on movie sets. Reminiscing about their times together, Kanayo described how he would often express fear whenever Monago performed an acrobatic somersault, which he accomplished very well despite his age and size. Kanayo recalls Monago's role in breathing life into the set and diligently preserving their cultural essence. Still in entertainment, Afrobeat superstar David Adelike, popularly known as The Vido, has disclosed that he met his wife, Chioma Roland, before he became rich and famous. The singer stated that if he had not met her before he became successful, he would have found it best dressed female at the movie premiere and received a cash prize of 1 million naira. Reacting in a video shared on her Instagram page today, Daya Musa condemned the award given to Babriski, stating that he was disrespectful and mockery to women present at the event. Meanwhile, the Best Dressed Female Award presented to popular cross-dresser Babriski recently at the movie premiere has continued to stir reactions. VOP News reports that Babriski was adjudged the Best Dressed Female at the movie premiere in Lagos over the weekend and received a cash prize of one million naira. However, reacting in a video message shared via his Instagram account, a portable berated the judges for giving Bobriski the award, stressing that it was in fact the women present at the event. Portable noted that Bobriski is a transgender and should be regarded as the same with women. Real Madrid midfielder Orlean Chumeni has revealed that he started listening to Nigerian singer Davido at the age of 10. He said the unavailable Corona is his favorite African artist. The 24-year-old spoke in the latest episode of The Bridge Show, which also had Davido as a guest. Davido Ingford, stating that he started young in Marrakech, Morocco, indicates that Brentford FC midfielder Frank Oyeka will not be available when Nigeria faces the Eagles of Mali on Tuesday. The hard tackling player was available in Friday's encounter against the Black Stars of Ghana. The player sustained an unspecified inju injury in the course of the game and he has been confirmed to be out of the Tuesday's game. Oyeka is expected to return to England today for further treatment with his club medics. Still in sports, Nigeria Super Eagles and uh, Paul Kosalanika William Trust Akung has given an update on his injury. The hard-working defender sustained an injury during Super Eagles' second game against Ivory Coast 
at the 2023 African Cup of Nations, where he was able to play until the final. Akang underwent the surgery in Finland immediately after the competition, and he has commenced his rehabilitation. While speaking to the press degrees, the base defender said he would be happy if it could be a part before the end of the season, but if not, he would return in May. Finally, in sport, the Super Falcons head coach Randy Waldrum has extended invitations to Captain Rashidat Ajibade, U.S.-based Africa Queen Aisha Toshala, and high-riding goalkeeper Chiamaka Naduze, among a group of 22 players for the two-legged Paris Olympic final qualifying fixture against South Africa next month. Regulars like Ashley Plum Plumter, Tony Payne, Michelle Alouzier, Ifoma Onumono, and Uche Nakano were also included in the squad. Notable absentees are Oluwa Tosin Demei and Rafiat Imura. Both were part of the squad that defeated the Indomie Table Lionesses in the previous round. The Super Falcons are at home for the first leg scheduled for Friday, 5th April at the MKO Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, before flying to Pretoria for the return of Lotfu. Love to Westfeld Stadium on Tuesday, 9th April. The winner over two legs will earn one of Africa's two tickets to, the, to this year's Women's Olympic Football Tournament with Zambia and Morocco to clash for the other ticket on the same day. And now to wrap up the news, we will take a recap of the stories that made it to the headlines. You heard that the, that the FCT Police Command for the kidnapping plot raids bandit hideout in Abuja. Federal government sends Interpol after fleeing Binance director. Petrol price crashes as NNPT announces new price for marketers. Nigeria government invites Gumi for questioning over banditry. And then sports world drum list Nadozi Oshala, 20 others for South Africa clash. And that is a wrap on the news at nine right here on Voice of the People Television. Many thanks for watching. I'm Chioma Innocent. And I am Kayla Abraham. Good, Good evening. evening.